Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be checking out sci scientists found this frozen body that, expo that exposed the secrets of a hundred year old mystery. Let's get started. Trends. Started. Trends presents, scientists found this frozen body that exposed the secret of a 100-year-old mystery. Before we begin, do us a favor and click that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to be inspired by these heartwarming stories every day. Researchers and explorers love to visit places and go on adventures in the hopes of discovering something new. However, in this context, what can be called as something new may not literally mean new. Discoveries can also be ancient artifacts, fossils, historical items, and so much more that have existed way before and have gone through generations and generations until they are found again. The journey can be a long and winding road. It's never going to be easy, and worse, it could be full of dangers. One team of researchers embarked on a journey to possibly solve a hundred-year-old mystery without really knowing what could be in store for them. In 1845, Sir John Franklin headed out from England's shores. He was bound for... I feel like every swear is last name Franklin or the heck? I feel almost every explorer or some have has somewhere in their name Franklin. An unexplored section of the Northwest Passage through the Canadian Arctic along the coast of North America. Sir John Franklin was no stranger to long voyages. He'd been in two as the leading officer. After a few weeks, five members of the crew returned as they were sent home, and surprisingly, the remaining team was never heard from again. Moving to 1984, a team of American and British explorers found an abandoned campsite on Beachay Island, a tiny parcel of land in the Canadian Arctic. Owen Beatty and his team searched the island for what could be the missing link to this long-standing maritime mystery. There they found three graves that had laid undisturbed for over a century. Each one had been marked by a wooden headboard, indicating that the deaths had occurred over three months. As they huddled around the snowy makeshift graves, this team of researchers prepares themselves for the worst. Four feet below the ground, the scientists discovered the coffin of one John Torrington. He had died 138 years ago, aged just 20. Torrington had been the first member of Franklin's crew to perish, but it was evident that he had not been the last, and nor had the other two men who were buried beside him. As soon as the coffin had been pried from the ice, they realized that nothing could have prepared them for this. There, staring back at them, are the open eyes of a man who's been dead for over a hundred years. Once Beatty and his team had retrieved the body from the coffin, they discovered that it had been almost perfectly preserved beneath the Arctic freeze. Torrington's body lay on a bed of wood chips, still dressed in the cotton shirt and linen pants that he'd presumably worn while alive. His crewmates had wrapped him in linen sheets and fabric, and most chillingly, his eyes were still open. It was a startling sight. He looked more alive than dead, Beatty told People magazine back in 1984. For a while, his team was used to seeing corpses. They were still shocked by how well-preserved Torrington was. It looked like there was somebody in there looking out at the world looking in at him, he added. Torrington, it turned out, came from Manchester, England. Before signing on to Franklin's crew, he'd worked as a steam boiler assistant, but in 1845 he joined the Royal Navy, subsequently ending up on that fateful journey to the Northwest Passage. Eager about discovering more about the lost crew, Beatty and his team performed an autopsy on Torrington's body. As a result, they were able to draw some conclusions about the way he may have died. For instance, he was acutely malnourished as death drew near, suggesting that the crew's food supplies had been running low. Nevertheless, his body had been very carefully buried. It was likely that the expedition had been going well at the time of his passing, despite his obvious malnutrition. The real cause of Torrington's death then was probably not starvation. In fact, scientists believe that it may have been a case of lead poisoning. However, the cause of said poisoning is still up for debate. In particular, whether it had come from poorly packaged cans of food or the ship's water systems, and throwing yet another scenario into the works, researchers believe that it may have been pneumonia that took Torrington's life. Whatever happened to him correctly, the possible causes still told Beatty and his team plenty about Franklin's crew. Indeed, it's thought that lead poisoning could have been a significant factor in the fates of the rest of the men, and not merely because it may have killed them, but because the insanity that results from it would explain some of the more rash decisions. Abandoning the ships for King William Island, for one, may not have been the first choice of sane healthy men, and like the crew, those ships would lay lost for more than a century. In fact, HMS Erebus and HMS Terror weren't found until 2014 and 2016 respectively, 18 months after their first so how did they even find the coffins? That's what I'm wondering. 
I'm wondering, like, how did they even know about the coffins or how where they were? Or, like, did they just go and were just looking for stuff and they just happened to came, come across? First journey, BD and his team returned to BJ Island. Once there, they excavated and examined the bodies in the... Sorry, I'm drinking my slushy. How do they know who is who? That's what I'm wondering. Other two graves that lay alongside Torrington's. Those tombs belonged to William Brain and Josh Hartnell. As they had done with Torrington previously, then, the team took away samples of skin, nails, and hair for further analysis. Once they had finished with the bodies, the researchers carefully reburied them back in their original graves, and in Torrington's coffin, they left something extra, a note written by one of the scientists and signed by the rest, left concerning the lost men. While people may never know precisely what happened to Franklin's lost crew, the bodies of three of its men have filled in some crucial aspects of this century-old puzzle. Thanks for watching until the end. Be sure Wow. Be sure to subscribe.